Hey, I'm Dr. Morales, and in this video, I'm going to discuss AFib attacks and what to do during an AFib attack. Uh, if you have it, ever have AFib attacks, and you might be having one right now if you're w watching this video, you might be wondering, what can you do? How can you improve these debilitating symptoms that, that you may be having? How do you know when is the right time to go to emergency room? That's what I'm going to discuss in this video to help you with when you ever get an AFib attack. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to talk about ways in which I can help you with minimizing the amount of AFib attacks that, that you have no matter where you live. So AFib attacks. AFib attacks basically are debilitating symptoms of atrial fibrillation. Usually they happen when people have what's called paroxysmal atrial fibrillation where if it comes and it goes and you're not in AFib all the time. So a person may be having a nice natural steady heart rate in the 60s and 70s and one from one moment to the next boom that heart rate goes up way up and it goes anywhere from 120s, 150s sometimes even faster than that. People usually describe that it feels like their heart just exploded and it's off to the races. People usually feel that their heart is going extremely, extremely fast. However, some people also have different symptoms as well. Some people may have chest pain because the heart is just going so fast. They're actually not feeling the heart racing. They're just feeling like an intense kind of pain and pressure in their, in their heart. And you may be wondering, is that a heart attack or is that AFib causing this pain or pressure in my chest? Some people may feel just very dizzy or, or lightheaded uh, just from the lack of blood flow for, uh, uh, from the heart rate going so fast, lack of blood flow to your brain making you feel dizzy or lightheaded. Some people may just have severe shortness of breath as well just because the heart's going so fast, kind of like when you're running and you start feeling short of breath, same thing's happening except that you're not running at that time. So the heart rate is going extremely fast during an AFib attack. The upper chamber of the heart or the atria which, where AFib comes from is actually going extremely fast, uh, usually over 600 beats per minute. Fortunately, the pulse comes from the ventricle or the bottom chambers of the heart, which usually do not go that fast, as fast as the atria goes, but it can still go extremely, extremely rapid, uh, anywhere from 120 to 150, sometimes even close to 200 beat, beats per minute. It can cause severe debilitating symptoms. So if you're having an AFib attack or you want to know what to do if you're having an AFib attack, here are my top tips for anybody uh, who is having an AFib attack at home to try to improve your symptoms, potentially stop an episode, potentially avoid a trip to the emergency room, and also understanding when is the right time to go to the, to the emergency room. So what are ways in which you can stop this episode of, of AFib? Uh, number one would be things that you can do at home, uh, which would be one way you can do that is what's called vagal maneuvers. Vagal maneuvers are ways in which you activate your vagus nerve, which is the main nerve in your body, which can help slow your heart rate down, and sometimes even can even stop uh, the episodes of AFib, but it can certainly help to slow your heart rate down. One of the most common one would be called a Valsalva maneuver. Valsalva maneuvers are where you basically take a deep breath, hold it in and then push down, kind of like where you're having a bowel muscle, so you're pushing down on all, all your muscles, so just take a deep breath and then you push down in, you know, kind of like if you're having a, a bowel movement and just kind of pushing down uh, and that can help slow your heart rate down and improve symptoms of AFib attacks. Uh, also other things that can slow your heart rate down and improve symptoms would be what's called a carotid massage. The carotid is your artery that's right here on the side of your neck. If you feel where the pulse is, that's the strongest, right next to it there's a, a, a strong area than uh, the vagus nerve called the carotid body. There's a lot of nerve inputs right there. So you would put a nice firm pressure on there and kind of massage it for, for about a minute. That can help slow your heart rate down as well. You can also do the other side as well. Just don't do them both at the same time. Okay, so you can alternate from one side to the other, just have a nice steady pressure, kind of massage it in a gentle circle like that, and that helps slow your heart rate down and improve symptoms of an AFib attack. Another thing that you can uh, improve symptoms of an AFib attack and slow your heart rate down and potentially stop that AFib episode is what's called a diver's reflex. A diver's reflex is when you actually uh, put your face in usually very cold water, you get a bucket of just ice cold water and just submerge your, your face in it for several seconds, uh, that can actually activate your vagus nerve and slow your heart rate down. Um, another thing that can potentially help with an AFib attack, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're having severe symptoms, would be actually exercise. I've had countless people tell me when they have AFib, uh, if they exercise, usually something cardiovascular like 
either running, doing sprints, or going up and down stairs very rapidly. That can help stop their AFib episodes. But if you're already having severe symptoms from an AFib attack, it may, exercise may not be the best option for you. Other option to stop an AFib attack would actually be uh, medications. Um, medications, including additional medications of what you normally take at home. Uh, these are just tips. Always talk, ask your doctor to see if any of these strategies are are acceptable in your setting. Um, another, commonly people with AFib either take beta blockers such as metoprolol or carvelolol or sometimes calcium channel blockers like cardizem and taking extra doses of, of your medication can actually slow your heart rate down uh, and may actually help stop an, an AFib episode as well. Metoprolol and cardizem, they do affect blood pressure so always keep an eye on your blood pressure if you're taking extra doses of your medications. In addition, there are other medications, uh, particularly antiarrhythmic medications, uh, that can help stop an, an AFib episode, or stop an a severe AFib attack. One of the most commonly used for stopping an AFib attack would be a medication called flecainide. Uh, flecainide is an antiarrhythmic medication which is commonly used in a technique that was frequently called a pill in the pocket te technique. A pill in the pocket means that you usually would take a pretty high dosage of flecainide, usually around 150 to 200 milligrams of flecainide in one dosage, uh, ingest the, uh, the pill and the see if the AFib episode will stop on its own with the aid of that medication. And it certainly can be useful for some people. Obviously because it's a pill, you have to digest it, it has to get into your bloodstream, so it might be 30 minutes to an hour until you really see uh, that effect from the pill in the pocket uh, technique. But flecainide is probably one of the only antiarrhythmic medications that you can take, uh, which may actually stop an AFib attack relatively quickly uh, at home. The rest of the medications are usually more of a slower acting or, or long-term uh, rhythm control strategy. Obviously, these are strategies that you could, for you for you to take at home, or things that you can do even at home. But so at some stage, you need to know when is the right time to go to the emergency room. Uh, and the number one suggestion or recommendation for knowing when is the right time to go to the emergency room is actually your symptoms. It's not the heart rate. It's not whether your heart rate has been going 120, 150, even 180. It's not the number itself that matters the most but how you feel that matters the most. So it really doesn't matter how the number is or how long the, uh, it's been going fast for. I've had some patients who have had heart rates in the 130s and 140s for weeks at a time and they've been perfectly stable for outpatient management. So it's not the number, but how you feel. So if you're having severe shortness of breath, chest pain, dizziness, uh, the severe symptoms of your heart rate racing where you feel like you just can't take it anymore, uh, that and none of these other things that I recommend at the beginning of, the, of this video have worked for you, that would probably be the sign to go to an emergency room. An emergency room is where they can give you intravenous medications, the ones that will act, act fairly rapidly to help control your symptoms. Usually in the emergency room, they'll give you intravenous medications that will slow your heart rate down. The most commonly ones used would be intravenous versions of metoprolol, as well as del, uh, another one called deltiazem, which can help slow your heart rate down pretty rapidly, so they're gonna be your most rapid onset or relief of symptoms. There are other intravenous medications that can be used as well, but those will be the most commonly used. But at some stage when your heart rate is very fast, um, in, uh, intravenous medication in the emergency room is just gonna give you the most rapid uh, relief, especially if these other at-home strategies did not work for you. Now long-term, you don't wanna have AFib attacks. You wanna have less AFib attacks over time. Obviously when you're having an episode you got to do what you have to do to, to alleviate those symptoms whether that's treatment at home or eventually going to the emergency room if needed but then long term AFib continues to keep happening and then long term treatment needs to be strategized to try to minimize episodes or reduce the amount of episodes that you're having which can include medications such as uh, beta blockers or anti medications. This is where procedures such as catheter ablation procedures can be really helpful to minimize how many of these AFib attacks are happening but then also lifestyle modifications really help as well. So that includes things such as losing weight, uh, minimizing artificial ingredients, minimizing added sugar, reducing alcohol consumption. 
all these lifestyle things can really reduce it your in the bigger picture in the long term sense to reduce how much uh, episodes of AFib or how many AFib attacks that you're having and that's why I created the take control of AFib program the take control of AFib program is a step by step guide to apply all the lifestyle modifications that you need to improve AFib uh, naturally and to reduce the amount of AFib attacks you're having so right on the link this, of this video you're going to see a link to the take control of AFib website where I list in detail what's included in the program uh, so see for yourself see if it's something that could benefit for you you can also see testimonials of people who have actually signed up for the program see what they have to say as well and see the take control of AFib program can be right for you uh, but when you have an AFib attack please take a look at all the tips that I that I mentioned earlier in this video see if they can help you reduce your symptoms of, of AFib and hopefully reduce your chance of needing an emergency room visit Till next time I wish you the best with your AFib